Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. So fucking YouTube. So <laughs> goddamn episode last Jim, week goes introduce up. introduce yourself. Episode, no, 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 no. No, I gotta say this first. So fucking episode 113 goes up last week and it immediately gets to goddamn yellow mark, the yellow monetization. So why? Did we use any clips more than normal for the music parts? No. Oh, what did we do? Maybe did we talk about a certain hotbed issue in the goddamn sphere? I don't know how the fuck any of these drama channels ever make any goddamn money when some little podunk fucks like us can briefly mention a very public figure and get a goddamn limited monetization, which just kills views. Not like ours are great to begin with! But Jim, no, now we have to fight it. Jim, can I walk you back one second? Go on. It, it was for music, and I did fight it. It was for music? I didn't see a music. Yeah, it was for in. it was even though it was only for ten seconds, it was that the girls like the girls watch it do 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 I forget the name of the song already. Watch the girls go by. Oh. Well, I guess I have nothing to be angry about then. <laughs> Never mind. Welcome to episode one fourteen, everyone. <laughs> oh, Jim. That's why when you wrote that I was like, Man, he's really mad about this music thing. I didn't even know what you were mad about. Because normally, because normally, whenever we get a music thingy, they one you're supposed to keep it at five seconds. That's like the magic rule, Bry. Yeah, but learn the rules, also, Bry. Jim, if if we've seen enough videos that literally play the entire video, and somehow are still monetized, I think our ten seconds. I think I tapped it out at as we're talking over it. Me, we already. I already fought it. It's already whatever. But that's why. Was that why you changed the hashtag? Oh, what, when, at the very beginning? Yeah. No, that's not why I changed the hashtag. I just wanted to, like, spread it out to more, like, subjects and shit like that. Mm. Look, I thought you were getting scared. No, no, I don't worry about that shit. <laughs> what, our, our, one, not... our one comment that was angry at us that didn't even listen to fucking the argument? Oh, that was great. I I do, here's here's my one thing. I, <laughs> I You guys I, are obsessed. You literally said, I don't know who this is. Yeah. Well, here, here's my thing. I always say... I enjoy if if someone writes a negative comment. I always I actually like to have a back and forth if it's going to be something constructive or whatever. But that was one where I was just like, oh, either they didn't really listen or like clearly just a huge fan of Zombie Unicorn. I was yeah, like, that, okay. it was definitely the type of person who goes from video to video talking about it to like blindly defend. But right, they, they, they had to they, they had, had to, to stand li- find us. Yeah, but that's what's amazing. They had to listen for almost an hour. Like, yeah, I know. To get to that point. How dare you say therapy doesn't work? I don't think I said that. Jim, that's part of the reason why I don't want to do timestamps. I don't want to make it easier on the trolls. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. But Jim, say hi to the people. Now hey, well, your... welcome to one episode 114. <laughs> Here I am angry at YouTube. Turns out Brian just didn't follow the fucking rules. <laughs> Jim, they don't call me Brian Rule Breaker Quinn for nothing. Brian, Brian limited monetization Quinn for nothing. <laughs> Brian not available in most countries Quinn for nothing. <laughs> oh, that's Fuck. like our WWE video. Oh, dude, that's a, that's like available in Guam, and that's it. I know. But uh, hey, welcome doing, to episode Jim? one fourteen, everyone. <laughs> Jim, what uh, what are you drinking on this happy day? Ah, uh, you know what? I'm just fucking. I'm so is blown this through. Keystone? No, oh, no, Bud Light this time. <laughs> blowing through my stockpile in my fridge right now. Here's a question I have for you, Jim. Go on. Why do you think blue and white seem to be the kind of go-to for light beer colors? It's a good question. It's like I saw the can and I should have recognized, blue, but I was like, "Oh, Keystone's that." Paps, I mean, it has the red in it, but it's prominently white with the blue, Mer- like Mer- light, Bud Light, yeah. Keystone Light. Only one it doesn't do. It's goddamn uh, fucking course. But uh, I don't know. Very solid. You want to talk confusion in the marketplace, like what you're saying right now, the goddamn color schemes more than fucking yeah. saying stone. I I also, I don't get it, especially for Bud, because their Budweiser's red. Yeah, I don't get it. Is it almost like, I don't get, yeah, that, that is a good question. It's been like that for a while, too, with it being oh, blue. It, oh, yeah. For like ever. I, it, I just thought of it, like, right this second when I saw the can. I was like, that's weird. And Bud Light Platinum is also blue, but just blue. like, yep. yeah, different looking. You think they would differentiate it. I don't know, yeah, it's weird. They almost go like the cigarette route where like the main color is red, the fucking light color is this, the lighter color is this, <laughs> that kind of deal. So And then there's cores. Then there's cores, it's just like 
No, no one knows the other beers. They just know Coors Light. Coors Banquet Beer. Come on now. It's the Banquet Beer. Ain't no one drinking that. <laughs> Jim, you don't want to taste the Rockies. I'll taste the fucking Rockies. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm i going a little fancier. I'm going with the Spaten Optimator. It's a Doppelbach straight out of Germany. And there ain't shit on here, but Spatten is one of the most well-known like German breweries, at least that gets imported here. So they're straight out of Munich, seven point six percent. And Jim, interesting. Do you know what Doppelbach means? Double cock. Double Bach. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Damn it! I was close. Yeah, it's uh this beer style actually like before the the whole craze of strong beers for like craft beer drinkers. This was like the go-to. It's actually really clear. I don't know if you're able to see it. It's just dark, but it's act- it is clear. Yeah, I can't see how clear it is, but it is definitely dark. Like you can probably see the bottom of the glass. Yeah, yes, I can. Um it drinks really easy about 7.6%. It's like malty like I don't really want to say chocolate, like maybe a little bit, but it's like almost like bready, like it's like what you would imagine drinking while you have a cigar is what I could place it at. Yeah, I've had Double Box before. I couldn't tell you, like, you know, the brand or whatever that I've had, but I've always enjoyed them. Um, yeah, well, Troganator, that's a Doppelbach. Is it? Mm-hmm. Well, slap my ass. All right. Yeah, I love <laughs> Troganator. Yeah, Doppelbachs are one of the most drinkable and heavier, but uh, they don't sit heavy, even though they, they feel heavy, but it's a delicious beer, um, and honestly, most German beers you're going to get in the States are good almost every german beer i've ever had is good shit it's where some of the most well-known practices come from so yeah going with that jim's going with a classic american i'm going with a classic german (laughs) ab and bev all the way that's what hop nation usa likes to say (laughs) jim you you gotta support the little guys jim (laughs) i support the downtrodden bro (laughs) yeah no no one's more downtrodden in the community than ab and bev (laughs) <laughs> Jim, they get so much bad press. I mean, they need your support. <laughs> they do. <laughs> what would they be without me? Uh, but um, so, Chambers, how uh, how's the new IPA May going for you? Are you uh, enjoying it or are you missing IPAs yet? Um, you know what? I miss the convenience of IPAs because, like, you go to a store, like you can, like you see something. Here's what I've learned with this new IPA May. Anytime I look at a shelf and I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Let me pull it down. IPA. IPA. Yep. So like, oh, look at this thing. That has a different cool. Oh, that's probably a sour hazy IPA. Fuck. All right. Let me try this one. So, like, you actually have to put, like, work into, like, actively selecting not an IPA. Because, like, every goddamn brewery has one. So, like, you can, you can trip and you'll fall into, like, a pile of them. And I know, and it's funny because we talked to uh, Hannah about it. And I know we've talked to people who know things about beer. But, like, it's weird, like... I don't know if it just is that much easier to make that style or because it's so popular. Everyone's like, even if I'm going to throw crazy flavors, I'll do it off an IPA because the base is something a lot of people like right now. Yeah. Uh, um, did you ever go to Bound uh, Beer Store? It's on 611. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I went there for the first time this weekend and same deal. Like, I was like, oh, man, they got an awesome selection. Yes, Two they do. entire rows of, ju- or like, I mean, aisles of strictly IPAs and some stuff that sounded delicious, but I was the same as you. I was like, ooh, maybe this one's not, oh, goddamn, IPA. I, yep. It was just, yeah. So. Yeah, like, I'm not missing, like, the flavor, because, like, I've had a billion IPAs, but, like, yeah, just the ability to just pick a beer down from the shelf and be like, oh, I'll try it. Yeah, and as we've said, even though we do appreciate good breweries and good ingredients, I do miss, like, it seems like the best can art right now is all for IPAs. Yeah. So I'm like, God damn it, I want this can, but I can't drink it. <laughs> and fucking Bounds, great beer store, great selection. You know what? It opened, like, two months before I moved out of my goddamn apartment. I was know. a minute all away. The time. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what is your go-to now? Uh, Summer and Beverage, right down the street. Did it, uh, is that where we went before too many games? Might have been. When we picked up the beer? Probably. Probably would have just went there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But I don't... I'm the same as you. I don't miss it. I still don't miss the the lack of headaches and not quite feeling myself the next day. 
But yeah, just a selection is right now. It's all about that. Yeah, it's eye opening. Just just how much is IPA based? It's in, it really is friggin' nuts. So breweries start doing better. Join our no IPA May. Yeah. <laughs> and use the hashtag and whore us out. Give us clout. Give us clout. <laughs> damn you. <laughs> Hey, we've got a lot of good submissions, and I am actually now, I'm creating a submission wall on our site. Nice. So I'm going to throw them all up there. Uh, if you guys ever want to see it, just uh, click on the link below for our site, and yeah. Yeah, Jim, it's, at, it's... Sorry, I wanted to, it just, it sprung in my head. You ah. know, I'm, you know, I got, go off on my tangents. Oh, I know. So I, very spur of the moment last night, created a poll, and it was for yes, Resident Evil Protagonist. I gotta ask you, who did you pick? I went Jill. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I, I think I think Jill's like from the feedback I've seen so far, she's been like the predominant. How could I mean? I always figured. I see. I assumed it was always gonna be her, Leon. Like I know Leon. Or Chris. Chris, for some reason, like he gets that weird. Like he's in the most games though. But he's meme worthy. But I feel like. People love Leon from because of four alone. Yeah, they do. Um, but yeah, no, Jill was like, I was, I'm actually shocked that like Claire was still doing pretty decent for a while, and somebody randomly throw down Ada Wong. I was yeah, like, there's like one Ada, thing. there's one Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no. <laughs> if 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 anyone votes for Steve, oh, I I was, I was like, some some motherfucker's gonna vote for goddamn Steve just out of goddamn spite. <laughs> I was going to put the option in there for multiple, like, be able to do multiple selections with your vote. But I was like, then anyone would have too much fun, especially you, voting for Steve. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so the person who said Rebecca didn't actually put a vote in on the site. So, right now, Jill's running away with it. Leon is in second, followed by Claire, followed by Chris. I'm a little shocked Claire's above Chris, but... Yeah, one, like I said, one each for Chris and Ada. That is that is massive disrespect to Chris. That Jesus. is that is so disrespectful for the guy that had the hardest time in the original Resident Evil. Fuck. Doesn't have a lockpick. Doesn't know music. I has no it. inventory space. <laughs> but yeah, he can light. He can get. The, he can get the map, Jim. That's important. You get that. You get that extra sense of accomplishment when you beat the game with him. God damn it. You really do. You really, really do. I forget. Was there something? Could he take more hits though? Um, I thought that I, was. I, I think he could take a few more hits. I think that was yeah. a trade off. Yeah, man, and he's actually yeah. Now, that, now I'm thinking about it. He was in one. He was in uh, Code five, Veronica. six. Code for, well, yeah, he was in Code Veronica. He's in Village. He's at the end of seven. Yeah, and Jill's really just Re- Revelations. Yeah, well, well, no, Jill's in Revelations. Well. Jill, I think Chris is. I think Chris and Jill are in Revelations. So Jill I, and her weird partner, who I forgot to put in there because I forgot he was even in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that is one more Jill. <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, and then the second Revelations <laughs> was that Barry and his uh, daughter. Yeah. Moira. <laughs> but yeah, no, Jill. I mean, Jill. Jill was in five, or she was in five. But she was a bad guy. Right. Chris but, had to fight her. Yeah. Look, you can't give Jill the outfit she had in three and not expect her to win. So, what are you going to do? <laughs> this is true. But she's the master of lock picking, Jim. Oh, she sure is. <laughs> but uh, speaking of games. I'd eat what? that Jill sandwich. <laughs> Damn it. Speaking of games, what have you been playing? Fucking not a lot. But uh, I feel like that's a reoccurring theme, Jim. Yeah, it's been it's been that way for a couple weeks now. Yeah, it's been a busy week. I got a lot more footage for Retromania Wrestling for their, the eventual review. So that was kind of what I mostly stuck with. And then, yeah, no, that was kind of mostly what I stuck with. So I uh, I beat Resident Evil Village for the second time. Started my third playthrough. And I'm gearing up because I want to do a Twitch stream where I do the speed run. One of the challenges is beat it in three hours. Oh. Um, I just basically need to keep unlocking unlimited ammo for the best guns. So just grinding through that. Um, <laughs> I started Shaolin Monks, and it was always my plan. And then the added bonus was I saw the announcement of Shaolin Monks 2 from Ed Boon. And I was like, oh, this is going to be interesting. 
and I was an hour into it, and all of a sudden my PlayStation just like turns off. So I was like, that's weird. I click the button, it goes green, then it goes red immediately. After some research, people were like, oh, it's just like P17 fuse, and all you gotta do is put some like solder like here and here. I was like, hey, that's easy enough, I can do that. Took it apart. As I'm taking it apart, I think I ripped uh, part of the... the of uh, course you did. <laughs> part of the, uh, the the wire that goes to the like the CD reader. Like, there's yeah. just, like, little thin wire, like, as I was Which is, like, some little ribbon cable or something? The ribbon cable, yeah. Yeah. So that popped out, but I was able to put that back in. I don't even know if that's the issue. I did the solder, like I saw somebody else on YouTube do, and now it won't even turn green when I turn it on. So I was like, well... That I, I figured it was done. I already oh, ordered. Fuck that up. I already ordered my next one, so eventually I am going to be able to get back to Shot Shaolin Monks. But as Jim pointed out, I guess it gave me more time to play Donkey Kong. Yeah, Bri, blessing in disguise. It's not because Shaolin Monks was actually pretty damn fun so far. Yeah, well, we goddamn old goddamn review, Bri. <laughs> so yeah, that's been my uh, that's been my playthrough so far. Interesting. Then, speaking of playthroughs... Alright, that was a terrible transition. I have no transition this week. That Let's just get into Patreon quiz. <laughs> Getting right into Patreon this week. Patreon.com slash drink a beer play a game. Where for as little as two measly dollars a month, you can ask a question that we will answer on each and every single episode of this Power Hour podcast. So, first question coming to us. Oh, see, there's the fucking thing. Oh, we owe a Patreon game. Oh, go to Patreon questions. Ah, if I was a better host, I would think of these things. First up, from Eric Wacky. <laughs> Do you guys have a classic 2D platformer that you enjoyed enough to check out? It's Modding Scene, and if so, which one? Oh, no, but after seeing, I think it was on AVGN, or when him and Mike were doing games, all the ones for Castlevania, like, I, I know there's a ton of them, that would be the one I go to, but I, I haven't yet, just because... Honestly, other than anything that I have in my Steam account, I don't really, like, I haven't gotten in a mod uh we've been hit up many times like why don't we do the tecmo super bowl mods like for the current gen rosters yeah that i would do in a heartbeat because that's awesome but uh yeah i i generally don't get into mods for older systems like that yeah me neither like i I've, I've been int- like yeah again like an old james and mike video where like they went through all those like hack sonic games especially that one that's like nightmare sonic where, like, his face turns bloody and he starts, like, chasing you and shit like that. And, like, you're on, like, limited life kind of deal. But, Jimmy, like you'd never be able to beat that. Well, I think it's unbeatable anyway. But, uh, yeah, besides that, like, I'm never getting into it. Like, I, whenever I'm, like, on eBay, like, prosing through, like, you'll see, like, a Simpsons mod for Streets of Rage 2. Like, like you know, people will sell on, like, a cheap card for 8 bucks, something like that. And part of me is always like, yeah, that would be fun to pick up. And then it's like, oh, why? Like... <laughs> Would I, would I even pop it in at that point? Or I'd pop Sam, it in like once. Stop having such a defeatist attitude. <laughs> Just <Bruh>. stop saying <laughs> why. <laughs> why, Brian? Why? Why bother? Why have fun? But yeah, no, I've, I've never really gotten to the modding scene on anything either. Too lazy. Jim, soon you're going to be dressing in all black and saying that nothing has meaning. <laughs> right, doesn't. <laughs> Next up from G to the Next Level. So, the Friday the 13th got a game recently. If there's going to be a new Nightmare on Elm Street game, what would you like to see in it? Ooh. Well, uh, Freddy is a DLC character in um, Dead, Be- Dead by Daylight, and they did him pretty well. But if I had to see a game... You know, he's one of the few, I would say, it wouldn't work to do the asymmetrical. Even though he's in Dead by Daylight. Like, yeah, you no, wanna, you shouldn't. Yeah, like, if you want to do him right, you kind of have to have a pre-scripted like that I, you can't do open world no I, I just don't see it working so yeah you could some, do you could do like a sandbox game but you can't do open world yeah exactly so like a linear sandbox i'm trying to think like how i would even hmm. that's you know what it, it's gotta be it's gotta be made by like one of those like out there wacky devs like, a guy who just likes to throw... One of the ones who just likes to throw shit at a wall in a game and see what sticks. Because if you're going into all these different dream worlds, you can have different games, different game genres. That's what I like to see. I like to see one of those, like, kind of games with, like, a straightforward scripted story, but every time you go to a different world for, like, you know, the nightmare worlds, it's basically almost like a different genre. So, 
You can have one that's like a platformer, and then one that's like a fighting game. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, one that's no. like a shmup or shit like that. Yeah, just like, you know, use your imagination, because, you know, that's what Freddy's all about. Yeah, no, actually, Jim hit the nail on the head. I think that is perfect. I think do a bunch of each each level is its own genre so maybe have him going after a neighborhood of gamers or like or like a group of gamers and you got it like as you progress through each one and and once again he's a villain like it's better to go against him than play as him. right right here, here here's the game here's the game i got the game God, you take don't you say take... anything disgusting no 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 it won't be it okay. won't be perverted this time okay you take Bart's nightmare, but you make it good this time. That's a good, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I like your idea. You expand upon it, like you do, uh, like almost do, like maybe like there's like an older dude in the game, so he's like the Atari style, like right. Pitfall or some shit, and then like you know, then do some kind of other platformer, do a fighting game, like you said. Hit all the major ones, even have like an FPS level in there, like just do absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And just make sure, if you ever do that, have Robert England do the voice. Nobody else. He's got to do the voice. And have Bro, you don't want Rorschach writer. back? No, Jim. No, I do not. That turd of a movie. <laughs> Good actor, bad movie. Yeah, that was a rough one. Um, but yeah, no, that's a great question. And I'm still actually even waiting on a legit Halloween game, which they, other than the Atari, they've never had. They've had other hacks, and he's been in games, but that son of a bitch needs a real game. Yeah, he's never really gotten the love. Nope. He's hated on, or it's a licensing issue. I don't know. Yeah, it's always going to be that. But yeah, that was a good one. And last up from Alex Perez. What are some of your proudest slash most impressive gaming achievements? Hmm. proudest i mean jim and i have talked about this a few times i would say like just the old marathons of going through the first three resident evils all in like one night like staying over at best my best buddy's house and like starting at like i don't know 6 p.m going till 4 a.m like whatever it was just like going through them as fast as we could um, but for more modern, I mean, it would just be some kind of crazy game in Call of Duty or, like, some multiplayer game where you just have, like, like the one game I went, like, 107 and 8. And it was just ridiculous. Something like that. Yeah. Or or maybe I'd even go, like, like one time when I was back in my, my short stint trying to be an achievement horror. Like, beating Army of Two by myself on, like, professional mode or something like that. You didn't do that. Yes, I did. You've never I played Army of Two. My... You shut your You don't mouth. even own a system. You... What? <laughs> I own, like, Prove three it. Xbox 360s. Prove it. All right, fine. I'll take a picture of the stupid achievement, but... <laughs> yeah, what do you call it? Like, yeah, I mean, like, in that, the computer AI is so goddamn bad. Like, Pretty it's basically bad. fighting against you. Still so. not worse than Matt, though. Yeah, it is still not worse than Matt. Matt kind of trained me to fucking appreciate <laughs> he, the computer AI. You're actually like, man, this AI doesn't just go after random enemies. <laughs> I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the reviews, and it's like, the AI's terrible. I'm like, yeah, it's not that bad. I've played with worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I mean, I know a lot of people get there, like... I, I never had as a kid, I feel like they're... You knew games were hard, but you don't appreciate how hard they are until you hear everybody else say they're hard. Right. So, like... Even day, this day and age, like, if I were to go and beat Silver Surfer, like, legit, I'd be like, that's cool, but I wouldn't be like, wow, that's my proudest moment, because I just don't have the connection to it. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, maybe during, like, the Guitar Hero heyday, like, if I could, the few times ever, like, 100% of a star on Expert or something like that, so, you know, dumb shit like that, but, yeah, Jim, I've never been the guy who's beaten, like, the super tough games and shit, so... What's that really crazy? Is it Dragon Force? Oh, fucking through the fire and flames. Yeah, I could, I, I, I think at my best I could maybe get through it if I was lucky. Like, at that point, like, yeah, I've never had the finger tap skills to even get through the intro without some fucking luck or bullshit. Jim, can so. we uh, can we do a, a training montage of you beating that game? Oh, Jesus God. I don't <laughs> have that kind of time. I do, I do not have that kind of time. Jim, all you got is time. <laughs> I wish. 
<laughs> no, that, that's a, that is a great question. Um, like I said, it's weird because this day and age, <clears throat> playing online is a new version of being in the arcade. I can remember, like, going to an arcade and, like, beating someone in, like, Street Fighter 2 and thinking it was a big deal, like, because it was the kid that everyone else beat. But, it, like, that's so hazy in my memory, like, so it didn't stick with me as much. But nowadays, it's like, what can you do online and multiplayer and da 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 So, yeah. I, I, oh, okay, all right, you know what? I do have one thing that I'm still, I can still hold my hat on. And the only reason I can hold my hat on it is because he completely underestimated me. But just the one time I beat Burns in StarCraft. <laughs> yeah, he probably was like, ah, Jim, what a shit dick. He's like, ah, oh, fuck around with him a little bit. But he was like, he was like, yeah, I was actually surprised. Like, you were really aggressive. And then the next couple of times I played, he changed his strategy and just wiped the floor with me in five minutes. Yeah. So, <laughs> See, I get I get fun moments. That Those are the fun moments when you do play someone who just is so much better than you in a game. Yeah. Like, every time we would play Smash, what was that, in Vermont? And I was able to knock out, like, Gun or you uh -huh. with Samus with just the easy, like, you guys all knew what I was doing. I was having the charge shot, and I was like, I'm just going to save it. <laughs> and and you're oh, all we, like, Oh, we would keep yelling. We were like, don't you fucking do it. It's like <laughs> me and you and Tekken when you're goddamn Paul at that punch. <laughs> I'm like, I know what you're going to do. I know what you're doing. It's happening right now. It, I, it happened. <laughs> There's a certain enjoyment with that. Like I, I don't. Oh, I know. The surprise is a good one, but when you show them what you're about to do and then you do it, that's when it's like the ultimate. Like, god damn it! <laughs> that's that. Yeah, that's that nipple rub right there. Really, Jim? Nipple rub? <laughs> yep. No, great question though, Alex. Yep, and that rounds it up for the Patreon questions for this week. So, once again, thank you to everyone for the support. We do not deserve it. And one, if you want to participate with the Pyre Hour podcast or get custom game reviews that <laughs> we eventually get to, or, you know, just other little perks, check out our Patreon. Yeah, and please make sure, if you are supporting us, get your questions in, because we do want to interact with you guys. They don't, they don't have to be beer game related. We've gotten plenty that are about fast food or movies, so we just like talking with you all. So please, get them in. Yeah, the more, the more random, the better. Fuck, yeah. we talk enough about these two damn things. <laughs> <laughs> all right jim so going to a, a little bit more of a serious topic um it's very hot in the beer world right now and um if you know anything about pa breweries or pa beer one of the hottest ones out there right now is tired hands and they've been like that for a while yep. um i've put the link below the instagram user's name is rat magnet I believe she is a head brewer. I don't know of which brewery, but um, she had posted something about an instance of uh, sexual harassment she was experiencing at the job, and I guess had asked some people like to share their stories. It got overwhelming. Like I'm talking, hundreds of stories started swarming into her, and she started just put it, posting them on her story, and then now yeah, she's make sure you check the story because Bry sent me the topic of like. Tired hands in trouble and sent me this page and I was like, what am I looking at here? Yeah, check the story. You have to go to the they... story highlights, like the little circles underneath that are the highlights. Um I think there's like it's up to eight right now, but each one has probably like forty stories within it. So it's it's pretty crazy. It's it's really crazy, it's disturbing, and it's one of those things you go story by story, and I read through a lot of them. And, you know, have we've uh we've talked with some people who are in the industry and <laughs> It's a really shitty situation when anyone has to deal with that stuff, but unfortunately, it seems like there's an overwhelming number of cases coming from tired hands. Now, I guess I should preface it's their allegations, but how many stories before you collaborate? It's kind of like the Cosby thing. It's like, okay, there's like 50 stories all saying the same thing. Um, really shitty. I mention this here because Jim, I had mentioned to him before, like one of my friends who knew somebody who helps kind of start Tired Hands from the beginning, kind of got uh, pushed out in a really shitty way. So I'd had kind of a like, uh, I don't know if these guys are like the best. And then seeing all these stories, it kind of just reinforced. I was like, wow, these are real shitty people, practices, whatever goes on there. I'm not for it. Like, it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I just don't think I'm going to get beer from there anymore. 
and they make good beer, but it's like, yeah, I, I'm not all for that. And like I said, if you're someone who's ever worked in an industry, unfortunately, like this is a real shitty thing that happens way too often. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those things. It's like one of the biggest topics going on right now for PA beer. I kind of felt like we should mention something about it. But like I said, I know, Jim, you don't follow the beer stuff quite as much. And right. I, I doubt there's anything big on Twitter. It's more on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, no, what do you call it? I haven't run across it at all. But, uh, I mean, the Twitter is predominantly video game stuff, too. We I have a lot of beer stuff on there. But, like, the beer world on Twitter kind of not really existent. Not to say that it isn't there and breweries don't go there. But, like, it's so much easier to just post a picture. With, yeah. Like, like, Instagram is, like, a beer haven. Like, gaming's tough on Instagram. Beer is fucking, like... That beer's like hotcakes on there. So, yeah, but now I'm looking through some of these stories, and it's just like, yeah, unsolicited dick pics, forcing, like, you know, himself to kiss girls on things, you know, a slap in a wrist, or, you know, might have gotten fired from one spot, but he becomes a director in another spot. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stories. Now, like, part of you wants to kind of think, you know, some of these could just be, you know, they had a bad experience and there's pile on, but when it's this volume and the same names you're saying again and again and again, yeah, it's probably it's probably it's probably all legit like it's tough to argue that and that's where i'm like like i said i and i, I a few of my exes have been bartenders no it doesn't come as a shock no no like, and and it's, it's just one of those unfortunate things it's like especially unfortunate it's like you would think like because so many breweries are getting better with that shit like you wouldn't still be seeing it but it's like man like what the fuck but like some of it started as, like, the, the uh, rat magnet. She was just posting stories of, like, people saying shit that... I guess, like, <laughs> there are a lot of dumb customers, but they would literally, like, especially dudes, walk up to her as she's, like, literally brewing the beer or something. Be like, hey, so are you, like, a bartender or something? Like, stupid comments. And then every time she would go to events, they'd be like, oh, so what are you, like, a girlfriend of a brewer? So it would be little things like, and that's one of the most common is a lot of these people that comment. It was like, these women are like, they would get stupid shit comments like that. And they'd be like, do you even know what a hop is? Do you know, like, you know, just asshole comments. And unfortunately, I especially, I feel like if you're working in the industry with alcohol, you're getting drunk assholes on top of regular assholes. So they're going to say some pretty messed up stuff. And... Like I said, it's one thing to be a complete dickhead and say something really stupid. But, you know, you, when you cross that line and now you're fucking with someone's professionalism and you're touching them. And, like, yeah, that's where I'm like, mm, -mm. So. Yeah, I mean, the outright just physical, <laughs> the forcing yourself on someone physically. Like, there's no. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what do you say to that? It's fucking terrible. No, no, like, no, it's, no. It has it, no place in a workplace. And here's, here's an unfortunate thing about it, too. Because. Like, a lot of... I, I'm going to be generalizing here, obviously. Yeah. But, like, a lot from... Like, we've met a lot of brewery owners. Like, you know, we like to talk to them and shit like that. A lot of them are just, like, dorky guys who are just, like, you know, beer nerds. And they, like, get into the hobby and shit like that. And they're all about, like, you know, science-y, you know, playing around with the chemicals and getting their different, different tastes and shit like that. It's, like, crossover with the gaming world again, where you give a nerd a little bit of power and influence and they start to abuse it. Because they didn't really have anything beforehand, so yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing that you hate to see in any goddamn industry. It's like there's no need for it. Like you can easily run a company without it, but people let shit get to their heads too fast. Yeah, I worked in the restaurant industry for a long time, and especially some of the ones that just become not like legit cooks or anything like that. Like the general managers are generally, once again, I'm generalizing. But they're those dorky dudes that, like, they get that little position of power, and they abuse the shit out of it. And it's, um, yeah, man. Um, like I said, with having exes that were bartenders, I responded generally in the wrong way in wanting to do something physical. And in some cases, did something physical to the said perpetrators. Not saying that's the right way, but, like, yeah, I, it, like you say, it just, uh, it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, cool. I'm done with tired hands until I see something better. And they seem to be taking the PR stunt of they're now deleting every comment that even begins to reference it. As opposed to making any type of comment to say, like, 
I don't even know what you say. Like, yeah, wh whatever the case is, I mean, so, you say something, you don't just delete comments and then go on like everything's hunky dory. You know what? I, I, this is what sucks about that. So the ones who see this shit and actively see them deleting stuff and crap like that, like you're the ones who don't forget it and you don't go back. Yeah. But it's almost a smart thing that you see with people on the internet do. Well, they'll start deleting comments that are negative, never mention it. And within six months, people forget and it all blows over. They take a hit for a little bit and then it's back to normal and as successful as they were before. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it's a shit tactic and you want to see people take accountability, but from a business sense, it's like, you motherfucker, I know you're going to get away with this doing it too. And it's another thing too, like with entertainment, where you're only as fucking hated or as bad as your last hit or something. Like, how many times do you see someone come out with something that people like, and, you know, after all, a lot of terrible stuff happened, and then you go, oh, what do you call it? We always love this guy. Well, Jim, I mean, you did say that Kevin Spacey comment after all the bad stuff came out. Bry, that was years before. <laughs> years before. Yeah, no, it's, uh... Bry, have you not seen his fireplace chats? He still got it. I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I agree with what you just said. I, I think they're trying to do that but also <clears throat> with the momentum something like this gets i feel like you you need to do something like you you, you better you know i, I don't know it, it, it's a weird thing like i said for me um it's just an easy choice i if, right. if i'm jumping the gun and i believing all the accusations then whatever but I had already heard bad things, and then when like you keep hearing bad thing after bad thing after you already have low experience, it's a, yeah. it's a no brainer. Yeah, their beers weren't that great anyway. <clears throat> but Jim, their milkshake IPAs, man, overrated. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I just had to throw this up here just because it's it's a hot topic right now. Yeah, and it's like this is definitely the first real big one I've seen in the beer world for as long as we've been doing this, like. Of such a public outcry, so. And I should mention there were other breweries. It's just. Oh no, there's ones from all over the world now being thrown in there. But... Yeah, and like from like PA, we're, we, I... we, we we talk about the one that's close to us, but there's ones from all over the place. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing is like it just seems like tired hands is one of the focal points. So. And a lot of these things again are. A lot of these fucking, the overly goddamn, you know, we're progressive, we want equal rights, all the blah blah ally bullshit. They're the ones sending the dick pics and trying to fucking bang the guy with the wife and shit like that. Jim, all I'm going to say is, <clears throat> this is another symptom of not enough motherfuckers have been hit in the face when they talk too much shit or do something bad. Well, right. I'm just saying, a little a little violence when you're younger, when you do the wrong thing, goes a long way in the in the future. It'll be. It's gonna be interesting to see how how people go from here, bro. <sighs> right. Yeah. They don't play in the playground. They play in the Discord sellers. Dude, who made there? Were, there was someone famous that made the quote. I forget what it is. Basically, like the number one issue with Twitter and Discord, all these things. <clears throat> you weren't meant to hear everyone. Like like when you were a kid and you were at the playground, you were somewhere. There were right. some people that just didn't speak up because they know if they did. They'd be like shot down, and unfortunately, this has given them a voice because not everyone's meant to be heard. Right, and now they're the loudest, so they're becoming the normal. <clears throat> and that's the problem. He like said, "Well, childhood violence, man." <laughs> Good luck with that, Bry. <laughs> I I got nothing. I mean, hey, that's not, I'm not kidding. Anymore. I can't do nothing about fucking, that. <laughs> you're gonna go to school. What the fuck you do, pussy? <sighs> it's just a matter. Hey, you talk shit, get hit. <laughs> it's simple, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it's simple science. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I just want to throw it in there. So I did put the link to Rat Magnet's uh, Instagram. Check out her stories. You be the judge for yourself. Yeah. Now there's plenty to go through. Yeah. I need to figure out how to slow down these goddamn stories because they're just zinging by. <laughs> you well, you hold your finger in the center of them, Jim. Is that what you do? Yep. No, oh, I'll be damned. <laughs> I know you're not the Instagram guy. I'm not the Instagram guy. So, so I right. make my posts, but I'm not the smarty. So, sticking with beer, 
but in a completely different direction. Coming to us from our buddy Kit, he asked, What fictional beer from games would we want to try the most? And son of a bitch, because I actually have a draft post for our site about fictional video game beers I want to try. So, yeah. So, Jim, why don't you start? Because, I mean, I have a bunch, so I'm trying to narrow it down in my head to which one. So, this game's actually going to be coming up a lot in the later in this episode, but the fucking... Whatever they have behind the bar there in the Mass Effect bar, where... In every game, like, Shepard can go to the bar, and if you go three times in a row, you're basically blackout. And you get, like, thrown out of the bar and shit like that. You don't remember what happened to you. So, I want to try that goddamn space juice. But, is that a beer? I forget if it's a beer. I'm pretty sure it, lo- kind of space it looks cocktail. like just, like, a cocktail. It's probably either, like, a cocktail or, like, a space shot, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, I've had Duff. I could have said Duff, but I had it in but Universal. You had I, have to put that, yeah. I have to put that old article back in the page. Still have it. Um, so there are many, many games with fictional beers. Uh, but one of them was similar to what Jim just said. Uh, Jim, do you remember from Skyrim, that drunk level, that like you get completely messed up? and Yeah. So in Fallout 76, there's a beer you create called like Atomic... Uh, nuka beer i believe and i could be fucking this up but um right. starting with like every fallout has always had beer but starting with uh fallout i believe four was when they had like a whole variety of like a red ale a pale ale. like they actually started throwing like craft names on it and then in 76 you can craft your own beer but the one is like a special mission where like you find an old speakeasy and there's a robot and you find all these crazy things with shit that would definitely kill you in the right. fallout world. It's whatever. And it's the same deal. You, as soon as you take the sip, you like wake up on a cliff. You're like, what the fuck happened? And you're like, you gotta like retrace your set steps, but like it gives you insane buffs and stuff. And yeah, I, you and I have talked, you might've had a few blackout situations in m- many of your few. drunks. I still <laughs> never had that. I've had close, I feel like, but I've never, I've always been like, oh yeah, last night, I can't believe I did, duh. You've never had a black, you've never had a, I don't remember anything, huh? No. The, the, wow. the oh man, should I say this here? Um, I have had, I don't know how I got home. No, oh, we've said that before. <laughs> yeah. For once it's not me saying that. But I, things I've done, I, I'm always like, yeah. Yeah, I did that. And you've seen me. I've drank plenty of liquor. I just, I don't know. I never, I've never had the full, like, I, like, there's a lapse in my memory of something that actually happened. <laughs> you've never had time travel. <laughs> Jim, GSP had it. And he said it was aliens. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's what's probing him, that's what he wants to say. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be a, that would be an interesting little experience right there. Minus the whole end of civilization and living in a post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> yeah, baby, 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 we <laughs> Jim, you're one of the first scale. Who are you kidding? You're... Oh, I'm fucked. I'm all by myself. I'm not living through that shit. You're a ghoul. <laughs> ghoul now, basically. <laughs> Damn it, Jim. <laughs> What's a little melt? Come on. I'll be skinny, finally. Uh, no, um... But yeah, so that article will be coming out where I have a lot of other. But I did want to mention, before we go off this, for fictional beers, one of the first things you see in Resident Evil Village when you land in the village is the Duvel beer, which is the same beer from Resident Evil 7. I spent, like, you know, I record all my footage when I play games now. I spent yeah. way too much time trying to get a good view of the beer just for a video so I could use it. I was like, there's something wrong here. <laughs> like, you can't pick it up. It's just a set piece. But I'm like, right. oh, it's beer. Oh, it's beer. Give me the beer. Give me the beer. Give me the beer. I want the beer. <laughs> oh, wait, Jim. That also reminds me. I want another random tangent. So, I presume you did watch the Village review. Yeah. You don't care about story, but I revealed a lot in that story. <laughs> yes, you did. So... I was like, oh, he's going to tell spoilers. I was like, oh, I know the whole story now. 
does that affect you at all? In in like I know you weren't exactly jumping to play that, but now that you know it, does it like at all make you think like you want you know to? What? Part of me was like, well, I mean, I guess I don't have to rush to play it at any time now. But on that note, fucking Justin Wang actually had a funny tweet the other day. But he was like, yeah, I've had most of the story spoiled for me, but the way they execute it was still different enough from what I expected that it still, like, was cool to see. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay, so even though Brian basically laid all this out, it's still like, oh, how they get there is probably still pretty cool. It's about the journey, Jim, not about the end. Well, Brian might be talking about that later. Damn it, Jim. Foreshadowing. That's why Star Wars and Lord of the Rings are so special. It's all about the walk. <laughs> <laughs> then they then they tried to walk a little too much. It's a walk to remember, Jim. <laughs> I'd rather watch a walk to remember than most Star Wars at this point. Jim, don't be that guy. And Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Fuck. Made the goddamn mistake one time of sitting, watching the goddamn extended cut of one of those fucking things. You don't like the original? I See, I've never seen any of the Hobbits. But I've seen the original Lord of the Rings. I like them. Don't get me wrong. I like the movies, but... I don't know how the fucking Lord of the Rings nerds watch the goddamn extended cuts of Lord of the Rings movies. Because it's just an extra hour and a half of fucking walking. Like, <laughs> nothing happens. Like, not, like not, nothing substantial was, like, cu- cut out or, like, you know, shit like that. So, I mean, I, I, I get being a fandom and jumping balls deep and wanting every little piece you can get. But I was like, fuck. So, Jim, it's, it's not the like the... five hours of my life. It's not like the Snyder cut. I, I was just about to say it's why I have no interest in fucking sitting through the Snyder cut. I don't need I don't need four and a half hours to take a movie go, to go from bad to all right. Jim, watch the Snyder cut; it's much better. I'm sure it is much better, but I want to sit through four hours to get there. Just do it. <laughs> no, but uh, great question, Kit. Like I said, there will be an article coming out. Um, ooh, Jim. I watched this, so why don't you uh, lay out this topic that you love so much? Oh yeah, this is one of my favorites over here. Good old Gamers Mad. So, apparently there's a movie coming out called Hero Mode, and <laughs> link to the official tweets below. And the story synopsis is basically, a couple runs a game development studio, they run to a snag, but their spunky little fucking, you know, their spunky teenage son is... You know, an idiot savant with programming, and he comes in to save the day, that kind of deal. And one guy on Twitter basically said it right. He's like, this is rookie of the year, but for, like, fucking game development, basically. Yeah. And I was like, it's a good analogy. It's a great analogy, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the dumb, shitty movies we grew up with as kids in the 90s, 80s and 90s, you were flooded with these movies. So, they're dumb, they're enjoyable, fine. The amount of goddamn man babies fucking... (laughs) crying in the comment sections and i know one was like a a different tangent was like a guy wrote like you know accurate uh, documentary about game development everyone's like you're you're not accurate at all it's like all right you missed the joke good for you but there's so many people who are like quote tweeting on their fucking soapbox going oh i sure hope this movie delves into the the horrors of crunch time and blah 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 Uh, shut the fuck up (laughs) <laughs> it's not for you. It would be if it had less funding. It would be on the Disney Channel as a movie. Yeah, that would Shut be like the fuck. Up. It's got Rudy. Like, what do you stop? Fat Rudy. Um, no, it it's it's it would be like legit MLB players being mad at Rookie of the Year. Going back to what you said, like this movie has it really isn't meant to be about game development as much as like this like crazy come. The story that's been retold a million times. The dumb, the dumb under. It's a dumb. It's a dumb movie for fucking kids to be like. Yeah, I can be that smart kid to save the yes, day. Like it's, that's it's it. fun and inspirational. Dumb shit. And, and here's the deal. You know what I think the problem is? <clears throat> the people that bitch the most didn't grow up. I mean, like you said, we were man. Dumb movie ideas like that. We were flooded with. There hasn't been a lot of dumb movies, and when they generally do come out, they do get so much hate that people are scared to try them. Like, the other night, I just decided on Netflix, like, you probably do the same thing. You go through a million movies, you're like, oh, I like that movie, but I'm not going to watch it. Oh, I like that movie, I'm not going to watch it. And eventually yeah. you settle on something you watch a million times. But movie I haven't seen in years, Naked Gun. 
they would never make a naked gun nowadays because it's so over the top stupid and the jokes are so on the nose and so like they're just silly as shit Right, which is why it's great, but then people would complain about how dumb of a movie it is in this day. Exactly. Age. So this movie hero mode, like I saw, I thought the same thing as you. I was like, okay. I mean, they already clearly made a movie, the best movie they possibly could about game development with Grandma's Boy. So they don't Obviously. need to worry about it with hero mode. I mean, this is about a kid. It's like it's it, oh, and there were people who were like, oh man, this is yeah, you know, this is the most fucking realistic thing since Grandma's Boy. It's like. It, <laughs> I just here's the deal. If you're, what, if, what do you nerds want? If what you, do you are, want? In, if you are an actual game developer, you gotta realize this isn't. Stop going after nets, fucking nets. Um, this game isn't for you, game developers. Even though they delve into your world, it would be like someone who's legit into cars saying, like, man, that Fast and the Furious really fucked things up. Like, no one used Nas that much because it would blow the engine. Like, it's not what it's meant for. It's meant for someone who knows nothing about that industry. In this case, younger kids who just like playing video games are like, oh, it's a game development. That's it. Just, you're not going to watch the movie anyway. I I never I never get that you want to throw shade on a movie you're not even going to see. If you see a movie and you hate it, I'm all for it. Like, you can give your opinion. But if you know you're not even going to see it, and you're wasting your time bitching about it. Like, now you're just, whatever. You're a drama queen. I don't know what to call it, it, it. It's the easy Twitter cloud dunk. That's all it is. It's like when we talked about when Burn Ratness was on about that Kotaku article with the bad headline. And everyone fucking, you know, just jumping to have that, the same hot take. 10,000 people with the same fucking hot take. But, you know, without reading the article. It's just like, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, of course, I'm guilty of doing it, too, but it's still just like I'm trying to do it less. But fucking, like, I saw this, and I'm like, why? What? What What are you mad at? You're not going to watch the fucking dumb movie with the fucking Mad Pat and Beat-Em-Ups fucking cameos in it anyway yeah, about a teenager. I don't know who Mad Pat is, but yeah. Yeah, Mad Pat's a douche, but regardless <laughs> of that. Fucking, like, it's still just like, why? S- stop. Like, fucking... Yeah. Why does this have to be like a 400 tweet thread? Like it's it's a nothing. It's a nothing movie. It's a nothing movie for babies. You're letting a movie for babies fucking kill you. Well, that's what kills me is it's clear it's overtly clearly for kids. So, if it was like meant for adults to rate it R like whatever, th- then okay, but it's probably all adults bitching about this, right? That you're seeing. Right. So, what are you doing? Like come on, man. I'd be like bitching about Flubber. Who's going to bitch about Flubber? Fucking goo- Ooze doesn't work like that. <laughs> the physics doesn't make sense. You can't have a bounce like that. <laughs> Willie really couldn't j- jump over a rock wall like that. He could if he believed. <laughs> I mean, the credit was it the critic or the Simpsons? It was one of them who made the joke about it crushing him. You know, good joke. He's, he's a good joke. I think there was a couple, but Simpsons definitely did for sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good joke. You know, we get it, ha But like, you know, on tw- if that was happening in this oh, day dude, and age, that's you know, all it would be. Yeah, that you know what it is. You you would get Neil deGrasse Tyson going. Well, actually, the center of mass of a whale is way too fucking dangerous. It's like shut the fuck up, Jim. You you just hit something really perfectly on the head. Part of the reason why I have such an admiration for Simpsons, especially as we were growing up, and things like The Critic, they were the basically well thought out memes of the day. Like South Park too. Like they weren't instantaneous, but they would still hit on semi newer relevant things and throw something out there that we all laughed about. Like, yeah, oh, will we landing? Like now that's almost why I feel like those shows could never South Park still I don't know how they turn around episodes the way they do. But they, like nothing can keep up with just internet culture now. And it's like oh, yeah. it's a lost art because like you can't appreciate how like the Simpsons would hit on things the way they did, and the writing was so tight, and it was like, like you said, it was meme worthy back in the day. Yeah, I mean they actually had writers back then, so <laughs> when Harvard well, also back then, also back then, comedy could you know try and push boundaries and be funny. Now everyone just doesn't want to be canceled, so no one takes. I, I what was it? Was it uh? Uh, what is a Glover? Uh, fucking, he was just like, yeah, no one takes risks anymore. 
Childish Gambino. He was just like, yeah. So no one, try- everyone's just trying to not get canceled and make like you know milk toast entertainment. Okay. I was like, fuck. Yeah, he's right. I mean, it's more it's more worthwhile to try to get social justice points than it is to push a boundary. Like you want to go for the easy laugh, and maybe back in the day the easy laugh was pushing the boundary. I don't know, but this day and age the easy laugh is go against a thing that goes against the social justice topics if you will and then that's the easy like quick clap that'd be like a local comic like being like man philly what about these cheese steaks? like all the stupid hack shit we always hear like it's the easy like uh, uh, okay but yeah then yeah i mean like 15 years ago the easy laugh was like you know the easy races and like you had like jeff donovan cross men and shit like that like like, they were basically considered hacks, but, like, that was the easy laugh, and he made a fuckload of money doing it, too. So. But Mencia stole everybody's shit. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Fred. But it's one of those, uh... Yeah, you... It is funny, because you and I talked about it. If you even go back and... You have... Do you still have the WWE Network? Um, yeah. I Well, I it moved to Peacock now, which they're taking a ton of old shit off it. Um, if you just watch the old Rawls from like the 90s you're like wow they they talk like that like you you even me like i forget like i grew up oh with yeah it. i mean i mean lawler making is like the blatant like, colin kane the big red retard every freaking week i mean yeah it can't was, do that these days but it's funny because like the the crowd the crowd booing a heel going you know sean's in f slur clap 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 that that's my point is like that was we grew up with that and it's funny because when I hear it now, there's even like a whole thing in my head. I'm like, oh man, you ain't getting away with like, ooh, like, like there's a certain thing in my head. I'm like, oh, right. This may shock you, but the DX segment where they dressed up as the nation did not make it to Peacock. What do you mean? It did. Might be a shock. What yeah, are you talking I about? thought it was artistic. <laughs> but but Jimmy Fallon. The Bizarre will not be denied. Jimmy Fallon can do it, Jim. What are you talking about? What? what? No, he never. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no, I I know. I know. <laughs> no, but it's uh you know, it's ah, the this day and age like I said what's going to be interesting is the next iteration. Everything will roll over. This whole Twitter outrage over fucking kids movies about game developers. <clears throat> it'll move on and then it'll be something else. So, you know, it is what it is. But you and your gamers mad, so I figured as soon as I watched never it, ending content right there. Jim, is it like There's a never thing ending I... story? <laughs> yeah. Fucking not the, not the dumpster. <laughs> I love that that's still You anyone... <laughs> looked right at me. <laughs> you and all the rest of them all, right. all looked Wait, right at me. Anyone who's ever watched the never ending story, I want you to right now write what is the first thing that pops in your head? Is it Falgor? Is it like the uh uh the the i forget the wolf thing's name is it the like weird gatekeepers is it of oh wait no that's labyrinth never mind <clears throat> but i was gonna say david bowie but there's a million things from never ending story that people think of jim the first time i have him watch it with me <laughs> it's uh you know when the kid gets tossed in the dumpster i just laugh and jim has this thing when he watches his movie with me he right away says "fuck you" because he thinks I'm laughing at him. But you are. But now I know he's gonna do that, so I can't help but laugh. <laughs> How many movies do you think you've done that to me? <laughs> a lot. I've done it with a lot, at least a dozen. <laughs> but yeah, the kid, he, the kid's like, "Not the dumpster again." <laughs> Good thing I was too fat to fit in lockers. <laughs> oh, Jim. Oh. Oh, this poor kid we did that to. But, no. Um, <laughs> you fuck. Uh, but he deserved it, Jim. Um, shit. You, I completely lost my train of thought. But, yeah. So, if you guys ever see a topic that could really make gamers pissed off, send them to Jim. He's a Twitter guy. He loves seeing that yeah. shit. I mean, they always run across anyway because they always get all the responses. <sighs> but, yeah, if you see something good, definitely send it my way. All right, Chamber. So I threw this one up here. I know you're much more into this series. You have, you have to explain this to me because I was like, all right. So, so or to go about a remaster. Yeah. Right. So the Mass Effect Legacy Edition. My general question is: so I, 
I know you love the series, and I know we've now seen so many remasters. Right. I'm not calling this a deep dive because I know this was a loved series, but more and more, like, do you think we're just going to basically see everything that was even semi-popular just get a remake at this point? I mean, it kind of already happened at the start of the PS4, Xbox One generation when there were no games. I think that's just going to be the thing going forward where until people really start to make actual games for a new console, it's just going to be lazy remaster, lazy remaster, you know, to keep sales afloat. So uh, we know all all systems. And the thing is, like, and before I move on, what do you call yeah. it? Like, at least with the Switch doing it with the Wii U games, like, fucking no one had a Wii U. So it makes sense that, like, most people are going to be playing it for the first time on the Switch. But we're not talking about, like, games that were, like, mega hits, like, you know, Last of Us immediately getting an update for the PS4 kind of deal or shit like that, or all the God of War games getting a remaster and crap like that. But let me ask you this, though. To that point, I look at this like the Mass Effect games, were they all 360? No, Mass Effect 1 was, I think, a 360 exclusive. But then, by the time two and three came out, they were released. But what I'm saying, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant- so most people missed a lot of people missed out on Mass Effect One. Like that's like one of the big draws here. No, no, no. What I mean is, were they all the 360 generation? Uh, Mass Effect One, Two, and Three yeah. were. I think Andromeda was Xbox One or PS4. So, with the way our culture is and gamers in general, I think it almost would be safe to say, like, anyone younger, like. The collecting idea is out of a lot of people's head. Like, that idea for you and me is like, whatever, it was the last generation. You can get cheap, play it, it'll still look fine. But, like, with Last of Us, like you said, with God of War, the ones that are just HD remakes, like, even more, like, now this one's 4K. Halo Master Chief Collection. Yeah, shit so like it's that. like, yeah. you know, it's one of those... I don't know what the process takes, but I imagine it's a hell of a lot easier than doing a brand new game. So instead of giving you a new Mass Effect, they're like, here's a shiny package of the old stuff. Because you're also going to hit that nice nostalgia because, shit, what was the first Mass Effect? When did that come out? Like, I think it said 07. So there you go. It, you're talking 14 years old at this point. And, and the article makes a good point. Like Even when it was new, the first Mass Effect was clunky. So, like, they basically updated all the controls and shit like that, as much as they kind of could. So, with th- when you see stuff like that, like, I'm actually in the camp where, if that's available now, if I ever get, a, like, a hankering to play the Mass Effect games, I'd probably just spend the money to get the remaster with better controls and whatever, and I don't care at all about the original. Like, that, uh, right. that value of, like, the original is going more and more out the window, and... You know, I feel like that can really only take place with 3D games. Like, if they were to remaster every N64 game and make it better control, better graphics, and this applies to PS1 too, Uh like, I honestly probably won't feel the need to go back and play it on those old systems. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, there's... Yeah, I I can see that. Even with older games too, like I'll tell you right now, I would much rather play the original Mario trilogy on All Stars on the Super NES than on the actual NES. Even though I guess it's a little bit more slippery for like whatever the purists they have their complaints about it, but like it just looks and sounds better on the Super NES. But, e- so. but even those, one way or another, you're getting them. I mean, you don't need to remake them. You have them available on the Switch. You know Nintendo from this point on every game. No, no, I'm just talking about at the time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a remake. <clears throat> yeah, but yeah, no. Like I, I look at it. I'm like, I'm not saying it's a bad idea, but it's one of those. Do you think more and more like uh, the perfect example I think of is like think like Grand Theft Auto, a game that yeah. five has been the longest running game in my eyes that has still held its value and still gets the admiration it does. Whenever 6 comes out, great. But if they were like, hey, here's 3 remade, here's San Andreas remade, here's Vice City, dude, it would make bank. Like, and you wouldn't... I'm sure it would. Yeah, like, you wouldn't be like, oh, but I want to go back to my PS2 and play it. Like, no, 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 no. You'd be fine playing it on a new console. Yeah. Especially if they updated everything. Like, I mean, the graphics and especially the control, like, the old ones are clunky at this point. Yeah. So... Yeah, bring it to a new generation. Like I would love to, pl- I would love to play. What do you call it? Like Vice City again, 
but I don't want to boot up my PS2 to get motion sick again from it. <laughs> like, I got motion sick when I was a kid from it, like, much less playing it now with how my fucking shitty body is. So, like, you know, give me, you know, good camera control and, you know, updated graphics and a smooth 50 frames, per, you know, 60 frames per second, that kind of deal. Then, yeah, I'd love to play it again. So do you prefer when they do these type of things? Do you just want to see a sleeker, better controlled version of everything the same that, that you grew up with? Or do you want, like, the Resident Evil 1 remake where there are some changes? It doesn't change the whole core of the game, but there's enough, like, surprises where you're like, oh, that's different. You know, as long as they're done well, I like both. I don't really care either way. Mm. Like, if you say, you know, this is the remaster and it's a remaster that's done well, then, okay, cool, I'll play the same thing I know and love again. Because you have the same chance at a bad remaster, like with the Silent Hill collection and during the 360 days, as you had a chance at a quote unquote bad remake like you had with Splatterhouse and no Wait, one what was the issue so, with the Silent Hill remaster? It like ran like shit. They didn't have any of the old source code, so they kind of had to like piece it together from scratch. Like all the voice acting was mm. bad. Like like from all accounts it was a pretty really bad remake or re or re release. Gotcha. Huh. Yeah, no, I just saw that and it like popped in my head. I'm like Now you you love Mass Effect. Does that yeah, Legacy Edition entice you at all? You know what? Before I would get to that, I have I I've never played Andromeda yet. So even though I know it's had a lot of problems and it's kind of forgettable, I still want to play that before I'd go back to any of the other ones first. Gotcha. Just to see because they're like, it's kind of funny. The article's like, oh, now into Mass Effect Four. I'm like, man, everyone just fucking <laughs> they're just like, oh, Andromeda never happened. Just rushed out under the rug. Well, we I I've been in a conversation with someone on the Resident Evil Village review talking back and forth about remakes and that's one of the things they're kind of already greenlighting Resident Evil 4 remake and they're like Code Veronica and Zero and no 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 we don't need to worry about those. I mean, Zero I can see, but like it's funny cuz Code Veronica has a fucking hardcore fan base. But those once again like I feel like probably not enough to relate to sales, I guess. No. No, see here's the deal. I was one of those kids I bought the Dreamcast because of Veronica. Like, I, 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 I have to imagine there's a good contingent of people out there that were like me. Right. It just didn't pay off. Like, and or who bought it, or like you who bought a GameCube for the Resident Evil remake, which paid off crazy. Yeah, but like I had right. Veronica for Dreamcast. I bought it for PS2. We obviously played it. I, I actually played it when we did the Resident Evil reviews. It just doesn't hold up. Like, there's... I, I don't get what the people love about it. It was, it hit that part of their childhood. That's what it I is. I guess so. Yeah, but, uh... No, it's... The, the only thing I really remember about Veronica... And I, I haven't touched Veronica... Besides our review, like, touching it a tiny bit just to familiarize myself with it again. But from, like, my time playing it, like... I remember the tyrant fight on the plane being a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. And I remember fighting, like, you know melted weird wesker like that's that's the only shit i really remember and like hunters like killing you in one hit but not decapitating you yeah 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 i mean like a lot of it was forgettable so it was very very forgettable um and actually replaying it i was like oh man there's a lot of stuff that annoys me with it but like you said so i saw i saw this uh mass effect i know you were into it but it just had me thinking like with games that come out like this it's just gonna. It's probably gonna be more the norm. Like oh, I yeah, think from sure. generation to generation, you're just gonna see those automatic. Like we're gonna remake them, you know. And yeah, I think Mass Effect is a good one to do it for, especially since the first one's so old at this point. Like, if you're gonna want to get you know gamers hyped for a new one, then yeah, see how this remaster does. Okay. Yeah. All right, Chambers. So now before we move right, before we start, funny little anecdote. Go so, with my first two beers, um, I'm on my third now. So, remember how we said last week about the joy of just having a beer you don't have to think about? Mm -hmm. Well, as I was sitting here not thinking about my beers, I was putting opening up my third beer, and I looked and I was like, wait a second, these cans have two different sizes to them. Because they are two completely different beers that i did not realize <laughs> as i was drinking them because the color scheme is pretty damn close because the color scheme was close and the taste was close enough so wait what's the size difference there uh are they the same and one's just skinnier no it's like what do you call it 
Yeah, wise. one the Keystone's slightly skinnier, but yeah, they're both twelve ounces. That is, huh? It's yeah, so the Bud Light's yeah, the Bud Light's slightly fatter, so yeah, they just work it out that way. But yeah, Which like, one ergonomically feels better? Well, probably a smooth, tall, slim Keystone Light in the hand. You can't go any better than that. Good, good grip, good hand motion. Reaches your lips a little closer. Jim, just, are we still still talking about beer? I don't know, bro. You tell me. <laughs> I'm just talking about my likes over here. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah. And, Brian, do you uh, want do you want a short fatty or do you want a smooth, perfectly proportioned one that just goes down smooth? Hits, right. hits the back of your mouth and just falls right down your throat. Damn it. Jim, we know your issue when things hit your uvula. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gagger. I'm a spitter. Damn it. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I'm dying here. Um. Yeah, speaking of beer, so I'm on my third spatting. Dude, Doppelbox are so dangerous. They've gone down so easy. But I'm not going to lie. I can feel it right now. Like, as I got up and got it and sat back down, you know yeah, that, 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 that weird warm, like, head rush you get? Like, the warmness? Yes, I do. I just got that. And I was like, ooh, I'm feeling that. So Nice. Once again, super delicious, way too drinkable. All right, Chambers. So... Oh. Your favorite. Moving on to my favorite gaming music. Um, so I put the song up here now, and it's it it is set up to go off at the exact time where I want you to hear it. Um, so <laughs> I'm sure we'll get tagged, but right, leave it to five fucking seconds. <laughs> so this situation, I'm giving Jim the game music first, and you want to all... see what what uh, yeah, real life so, song? So here's. Uh, trying to think how to say this i almost want you to hear it first and then see if you can guess it all right the only thing i'll say is it doesn't have to be an actual like a band song it's a song you know is all i'm gonna say huh so don't stick to just like musicians does that make sense Not so just so, so so when you're listening to it don't just be like oh it's a band okay maybe it's from a different media is all I'll say. All right. Let's. All right. I'm going to be clicking on so, it. So tell me when you're going to click on it. Three, two, one. Clicking the button now. So it's Marvel vs. Capcom 3. What? Power Rangers theme song? Yep. Damn it, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. All right. So, yes. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You're listening to it right now. It's a theme of Wolverine. I've never picked up on this while I was playing the game. But uh, hearing this, I was like, wow, this sounds just like Power Rangers. So here's the Power Rangers clip. That initial riff, I gotta say, it's pretty goddamn identical. It's almost exactly identical. I mean, yeah, you... it's all the widdly, 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 widdly part. Yeah. It's the exact wait, same, basically. Wait, what is it, Jim? The widdly, 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 widdly. <laughs> is, is, is that a musician term right yes, there? Yes, that, that is an exact musician term. A widdly, widdly, widdly? The widdly, widdly, widdly. So Look, did you if know anyone knows the prophet, Carl Bertano Nataluski from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Widdly, 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 widdly. Damn it, Jim. So, Jim, did you know this beforehand? No, not You got not that, at all. like, right off, but right off the bat, that rep. Right. I have listened to the Power Rangers theme song <laughs> so many times in my life. So, yeah, if you listen to the rest of the Wolverine song, okay, maybe it's not. But that particular part, and it does repeat a few times, it's pretty damn clear. It's inspired. Yeah, no, I mean, as soon as I heard that, I was just like, oh, yeah, this is, come on. Yeah, yeah, it's the finger tapping and then going up and down the uh, the fretboard there. And almost the exact same, like, tempo and almost the same notes. Like, yeah, it's basically the same thing. So, have they ever did the Power Rangers theme on Guitar Hero? Not officially. I'm sure there's been, like, fan-made tracks out there. At least that I know of. But I, if, it, if they did, I never downloaded it or knew that they had it, but... I, I would be shocked almost if they never did it. Do you think you could do that part pretty easily? Oh, fuck. I'd have to get my uh, finger tap and chops back up. <laughs> that would hurt. I knew that I mean, would it's hurt. Not, it, we know it's not Dragon Force, but that no. that is pretty damn fast. Yeah, it would, it would be one of these. It would be, it would be one of those ones I fucking hate. I, don't, <laughs> I never hated them as much as the, uh, the three chord. 
the three note like crazy stretching chords. Yeah. yeah. And like switching back and forth between them because I'm I'm a drummer. I have stupid fingers. So you're a drummer and you're sometimes bass player. <laughs> sometimes. And and an all time tuba, or not tuba jug. Who who who? Take me to a goddamn hoedown, who nanny. So yeah, I uh, yeah, Jim and I we completely agree. It is inspired, but you let us know below. Do you think maybe it's just a quinky dink? I don't know. To me, it seems pretty obvious. A clink of dinker. All right, Chambers. So you put this one up here. So I'm yeah. let you read it off. So, friend of the show, good old Pam from Cannot Be Tamed. So she put up a video recently, and Blink will be below to it. Uh, she basically had a video where she she was like, yeah, I just drank a bunch of wine and did a ramble about the ending to Mass Effect 3. So I'm going to upload this. And basically, it, it goes, the ending to Mass Effect 3 was good. So, Mass Effect 3's ending was a huge controversy when the game first came out. And, because, basically, Mass Effect always prided itself on all your decisions matter and it all builds up, blah, Mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And, at the end of the day, the original pre-patch ending was just pick one of three colors and that determines the fate of the universe, a la, like, how they did it in, like, the old Deus Ex games. So, and people were pissed. So, her argument was kind of like, you know... The like so what I got from it was for overrated underrated this week, the endings to video games, and like how much they matter. Is it overrated or underrated? Hmm. So I'll let you start with this one because so, I mean I put it here, so I have my opinion. So I'm gonna go with the probably answer that will shock you a little more, and I'll say they're overrated. Um, only because, like any media. You do this for movies, you do this for... Well, okay, never mind. Movies, books, and games. Anything that includes a story. The ending, in theory, is always nice, but ultimately, I've never found anything where everyone was completely satisfied. The closest is probably Avengers Endgame. Like, and even that, there gets some debate. But, But really, like, it's all about the journey. Like, that's what everyone cares about. Like, the fact that I've had... I've gotten in this debate so many times, like, especially when you watch, like, HBO series, and I know you don't, but with, like, people at work, like, True Detective, Game of Thrones, Sopranos, everyone doesn't deny those are some of the best shows ever created, but you get that small contingent that gets so pissed off at the very last couple minutes of the last episode and then they want to write off the entire series like all of a sudden nothing else mattered except for that little period i'm like no 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 you had so much enjoyment for like 80 some however many hours and now all of a sudden you write it off i think an ending is always tough because you're never going to satisfy people because ultimately especially in video games you're either setting up a sequel or a follow-up game or you're trying to round out the story of this character that you were supposed to care so much about. And most of the time, you're never going to kill a character. So it's going to be something ultimately cheesy. They're not going to take a ton of risks. And that's why, you know, the ending is what it is. As a kid, I love seeing various endings. But ultimately, I never cared. Like, it was cool. But it was like, okay, that happened. Now what? So, endings are overrated because it gets too much emphasis put on it by the wrong type of people who just want to bitch about it being bad. And at the end of the day, the ending shouldn't define the entire game, and it shouldn't define an entire series, because you're never going to satisfy everyone. Now, okay, to that point, because that's an interesting point you brought up with the HBO series. So, what do you say for the argument between Sopranos, where everyone was mad at the last, like, 30 seconds... As opposed to Game of Thrones, where everyone hated the entire last season. I look at the last season of that series as... Well, one, it was rushed. But two, it was kind of like... That whole last season almost was the last ending. So that's another one where, because of the last season, everyone wrote off all the other seasons. Regardless of if they loved the shit out of every other season... It's that same mentality. So that last season, like, that's a little tougher. I didn't hate it, but you knew, like, going in, every, I think every season Mm, up to that. Did you know? 
Everyone, everyone basically was just like, oh man, last season's gonna be good as everyone else. Well, anyone that had an IQ, because here's the deal. Every season before that was 10 episodes at like basically an hour. This one was like six episodes and some of them were only like 40 minutes and they had to close up so much shit. So anyone who truly thought it was going to be cleaned up nicely, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you know, there was a few episodes are like, oh, it's an hour and 10 minutes. It was one of those situations where if you went into that expecting... It wasn't... Once again, that's why I say Marvel is the only thing that's ever done a full franchise right. Because they had... What was it? 24 movies? 23 movies over 10 years? Yep. So they spent plenty... And the final movie was, what, three hours? They spent yep. all the time in the world. Uh, Game of Thrones, budget issues, all these other things. They crammed everything. They, like... Uh, 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 whatever, like all this other shit we spent time on. Let's rush it and just throw in action scenes. Of course it was going to be a disappointment. But still, like, you got to see the battles you wanted. You got to see some stuff. Was it as satisfying as getting a little more? Of course not. But once again, that doesn't define, like, that doesn't make season one and two suck for me. It makes, like, okay, the ending wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. But, you know, what are you going to do about that? Like, a video game especially... I said Resident Evil Village is, seems to be very divisive. I liked it. It closed off the whole Ethan Winters and like his storyline. What it's potentially open, opening up, I'm not crazy about. Brad, but I, quick quick tangent. Yep. Did you watch the Come Drive video I sent you to explain the I, comment? I did not, Jim. I should Brad, have, watch the Come Drive video. I don't want to watch any video that is called a Come Drive video. It's only five minutes. It's a guy who, who made a My Little Pony tribute. It's adorable. I don't Watch the Come Jar video. Why is the term My Little Pony and Come Jar in the same sentence, Jim? Why? Bro, you were talking about internet legend there, all right? That's, there's nothing legendary about that. God that's one of the, that's one of those essential reads for the internet you need, Bro. You need, like, the Come Jar guy. You need Chris <sighs> Chan. You, th these are the essential things you need to know. Jim, just like when you get told, like, here's essential reads. Like, you got to read Pride and Prejudice. You got to read Lord of the Flies. There's some things I'm just okay, like... The essentials I can leave out, and I can leave out Cum Jar or whatever the hell this is. I it's okay. I'll I'll, I'll be fine not reading it. <laughs> will you though? Will you? So so yeah, like I said, and you know me, I love story, and I've been disappointed many times by endings, but I still don't leave it like that. Pisses me off when people, like I said, True Detective was one of those shows where i think it was only eight episodes but the beauty of that show was you were trying to follow along and come up with your own idea of what's going on who's the killer and the fun was like talking with others like here's my theory da, 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 da. and of course the end came out and it was kind of like the uh harkham's razor like if it seems the most obvious it's going to be x it probably is and that's what happens in a lot of times in storytelling so you know most people just like to bitch about endings. You don't have a lot of people that always say that was a great ending, you know? Yeah. So what do you, what are you going with? No, yeah, I mean I'm kind of right there with you because especially with Mass Effect Three, I only played it like a year after it came out. But uh, like when I played it and like I saw the ending, I was like, yeah, the ending wasn't great, but like I loved <laughs> the forty hours I spent with it before that you know, last five minutes, so I didn't really care. Yeah. And again, I'm not really the story guy anyway, but. Even I was just like, oh, that was kind of a weird, quick ending that they did with this. And I actually still haven't played the uh, the patched ending either. But, like, I just put, I only ever knew the original ending. So, yeah, I, I saw it and I was like, oh, okay, it's that was weird. Seems like nothing really mattered, but fine, whatever. But no, like, I still enjoyed fucking the whole game up to that point. I think gameplay-wise, Mass Effect 3 is the best one in the series. So, And here's the deal. I found that every time I would get in these arguments with people that would be so bitchy about an ending, I'd say, okay, so how did you want it to end? They would always say, I don't know. I just don't want it to end like that. Like, they have no, like, good, like, there is no such thing. Like, think of every, whatever your favorite games are. Like, and granted, once again, they're not story heavy, but like, Star Fox, Streets of Rage 2. You beat the final boss, they save out, you know, okay. The, what, what what right what happens if you beat mr x and then shiva gets up and fucks you in the butt what, what's that would you be Damn mad it. then like what like, like like it's just one of those things where 
there's an inevitability to the end of anything that you're never going to be fully satisfied. And that's not what it's ever been about. It's kind of like the same reason why whenever you play a game, especially let it be an RPG, some of your best memories are as you're like so weak and you're like every little valuable you find means so much more and every piece of armor. Because once you start getting those like godlike things and you're just blowing through, you don't care about all the little details. You're just kind of going through the motions to get to the end yeah so it's like the value like you said in playing through 40 hours and what you enjoy the end is what it is and there's there's been endings i haven't loved like fucking ghosts and goblins where it's a trick ending and then you get to the real one and it's double bullshit but uh yeah i think they're overrated i think too many people put too much emphasis on the value of it versus the entire game all right, well, we're in there. So, people, especially you RPG dorks out there, please let us know where you stand on this issue because for a lot of people, you know, they have that mindset of what's the point of investing all this time if the ending sucks. So, hey, you tell us. Yeah. I mean, did you think... Did, you probably assumed I was going to go underrated, didn't you, Jim? Um, I wasn't sure which way you were going to go, to be honest with you. Yeah. Is it, Cause you're, cause you've also been the part, like for as long as I've known you, who's like, if you enjoyed everything up to the end, you'll defend everything else to the death, not to the death, but like you'll defend it more than most people will who have like that knee jerk reaction. Yeah. Because especially for like Game of Thrones, like the market on Game of Thrones got destroyed by the last season. It did, and I was one of the few. Like, well, yeah, there was there was a. a you just thing. like your goddamn dragons too much. I mean, it's one of those deals where. I guess maybe I'm I'm too used to, like, what I, I... I think there was those naive people. I think it just comes to being naive. Like, once again, you see there's six episodes left. What do you think's going to... Is magic going to happen in 40 minutes at each time? Is the complex story of each character going to be spelled out? Or do they got to spend 30 minutes on that final battle scene? Like, you know, it's one of those where you go, oh, obviously they're not going to have enough time. And even though I, I preach the shit out of that to the people at my work, they're like, no, 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 they'll still be able to. I'm like, okay, like, you're going to be disappointed, I promise, if you go in there thinking you're going to flush out everything. And that's what happened. <laughs> All right, now what's more painful? Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll give you two examples. Uh, what do you call it? Game of Thrones, where they just rushed through everything at the end. What, what's more frustrating? Where they had a whole season that, that was rushed, or where they rushed themselves like the end of Sons of Anarchy, where the first half of the last season, they're building new characters and new plots. And I'm like, why are you building shit? This is the last season. Like, what the fuck? How are you going to end this? Both were a mess. Sons, like, felt more disheveled. Like, like they almost couldn't decide what to do. Like, to your point. Like, yeah, they introduced these characters. Like, the first half of the last season, I'm like, why are they introducing so much shit? Like, like I you're, couldn't you're ending tell... this in five episodes. Well, that's what I couldn't tell with that show. I was like, are they building towards a sequel? And I know they did, like, the Mayans, but none of the characters they introduced went anywhere. Yeah, I got bored with Mayans. And it's one of those where I'm like, so you kind of did introduce all this shit for no good reason. Where they threw in a bunch of extras you didn't need. I was still more disappointed with Game of Thrones because you were so invested and you got no... You got a lot of things with, like, very minimal, like, good answer excuse me or closure versus just getting a bunch of extra shit that was unnecessary so i mean you seem like the type though jim if you see a movie and you don't like the ending i could see you writing off an entire movie i could see you being like oh that's fucking stupid like i'm not gonna like that that whole movie's dumb because of the ending i'm sure i've thought that before but i'm trying to think of an example like well, I know you don't write off all of Star Wars, but you no, write off I still a lot of it. the third movie. And third, I mean prequels. Or not pre you know what I mean, the original three, six. What, 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 I write off a lot of uh, Jedi? Yeah. I still like Jedi, just as I got old, I was like, yeah, fucking stupid bears. <laughs> That's but, what um, I, mean. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, Jedi was my favorite because it had the best space battles. So. Yeah. And then as an adult, I was just like, yeah, these bears are fucking dumb. So, you know, that is what it is. But, 
shit, I'm trying to think of like something that like the ending really pissed me off, like that much. And, and sh- show wise, I mean, you don't watch a ton of shows. I don't watch a ton of shows. No. no. So. Okay, so a good example, like, say you're watching a WrestleMania or a wrestling card, and the final match sucks, but everything else up to that was good. Are you going to be more pissed with the final match being like, you know, I I don't even you just I saw you tweeting about back what was it backlash? Backlash. Yeah. What was the final match? Uh, Cesaro versus Reigns. Okay, who won? Reigns. Were you mad about that? No, I kind of expected it, but it was a good match. So okay, re- wrestling's weird though. Like, that, like I if the whole card's good, but the main event's a clunker, I'd still be like, oh, all right, like that was still a decent show. And it's also funny where the whole card can be a clunker, but the main event can be awesome, and I'll be can... like, I went away happy. So yeah, okay. No, I see that. Yeah, I... yeah, man. Backlash was a fucking up and down show. Holy shit! <laughs> so based on your. T- what, did I, from your tweets was there zombies? Yeah, there were zombies, like legitimate zombies surrounding the ring during the Miz versus Damian Priest. So that was for the Batista movie, right? I think they had a promo I, for the had Batista to, what, movie is, after. Is, wait, is yeah. Batista wrestling again? No. Oh, okay. So that's weird. but I, I don't know if it was a WWE maybe like their co-produced movie. I, yeah. Well, it's a Zack Snyder movie. I know that. Is it? Wow. Well, I, the only thing I know about that movie, I knew about before because I was like, oh, Zack Snyder. Because I, I still defend the shit out of Dawn of the Dead. That movie is amazing. No, Dawn of the Dead's great. It's his best movie. Yeah. Um, And I saw, I was like, oh, a zombie movie. Like, okay, like, I liked him in Dawn of the Dead. And, I, and this was back when uh, Chris D'Elia was in it. And then he <laughs> got pulled for Tig Nataro, I think is her name, Um, with all of his, alga- like, all that shit. And I was like, oh, whatever. And then, yeah, I saw your post. I was like, there's zombies. And I thought I saw somebody write, like, yeah, it's like a thing for Batista. But I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't put two and two together there. Maybe they are financing. Or I, I didn't know if he was, like, does what The Rock does, which is every so often just, like, pop back in. Like, I'm doing something. No, no, that makes sense. Because, like, when I saw zombies come out, I was like, fuck this. And I took a piss. And then I come back <laughs> down. And it's like the movie promo for the Batista movie. So I was like, well, ah, huh? Okay. okay. So. That's interesting. No, it, it was a short match, so. But no, like, yeah, like, the Mi- the fucking zombie Miz match was terrible. The Rey Mysterio and his kid match was terrible. But then, like, it had a bunch of, like, fucking Drew Strowman and Lashley fucking overperformed like crazy. So, very up and down. Very up and down night. Yeah. Well, see, <laughs> WWE is, like, the last season of Sons of Anarchy now. They throw in too much shit that just doesn't make sense at this point. Oh, no, I mean, I've, I haven't watched Weekly in fucking, like, two years at this point. Like, it, it's unwatchable, but I can tune into a pay-per-view that I'm not paying for, so that's fine. <laughs> Jim, you just have to accept you're never going to get that spark back of liking wrestling like he used to. No, I probably, unless they fucking do a whole about face, I probably won't even like it as much as I did in, like, 2014 again. So yeah, yeah. It's just that bad. No, but that is that was a good question, and, yeah, like, like Jim said, check out Pam's video below. We have the link for it for Mass Effect 3. But uh, speaking of recurring bits, Jim, it's just, this is general, but for once, I want us to go positive. Okay. And I want to get, let's go, which is better and... What, which is less rapey? Is that where we're at <laughs> That's kind of, well, at first I thought I was going to say which is worse, and I was going to go that way based on our topics, but... Which is better, the gaming industry or the beer industry? And, you know, you and I, we've talked with people from both. Um, More so, we've obviously talked gaming. But I'm also thinking, like, fans. And you know what? I will say, like, when you do get some good people that are, like, fans of beers, or especially brewers, there's a different different quality there. So, basically, the question is, which is better between the two of them? And... You know, if I can set the tone, one of the things I was thinking of, and this isn't me giving my answer, but I was saying, you know, it seems like every time we talk to a head brewer or someone who's legit in the beer, yeah. they are so, they they want to get you educated, knowing about stuff, and they, like, they're all in on their craft, and they care about, like, you enjoying their product. I feel like with the game industry, developers don't give two fucks. And especially on a Twitter like standpoint, they couldn't care less. The fans are pretty cool, but it's also a very weird mix of like, 
depends on what kind of fan you are. Like, well, if I mean, de- developers take themselves too seriously too. Like, too many of them think they were fucking these high grade artists. That's like, what I mean. How, okay. Whereas, like, you know, we other than like <laughs> your your buddy uh, what was it? shit. I, I forget his name already. Greg Coke. Oh, good old Coke. Like, yeah. like there are some brewers who we've never talked to personally, but from, <laughs> we never will after my from, dick sucking simulator five thousand. <laughs> from articles, you're like, man, okay, nah. But like everyone we've met, like, no, they're just like, they're really down to earth, and they're some of the coolest. Like, <clears throat> they're the most personable, and like Jim says, like game devs they have this like holier than now and unfortunately what's infected game industry in general is gaming youtubers who like get that air about them themselves like oh yeah i review game whereas i feel like you never get that with beer drinkers like the only shit with beer industry i was always kind of like eh was like you do get those assholes that are diehard who are like oh you're not drinking an ipa like you're drinking a blue moon like huh but it's it is kind of more few and far between whereas game industry you know when you get like-minded fans it's cool man but the opinions can be whatever but like i said i'm trying to stay away from negative but the positive is like i said beer industry i feel like talking to the people that develop the thing you love the most is so much easier and they are so much more personable Whereas the gaming industry, like, it's just, there's so much more people to talk about so, the crap. So, okay, um, should we phrase this as personalities of the gaming industry versus the beer industry? Well, that, that I, that's what I was struggling with. Like, what do you think is a better, if you, if you because, legit cause here, wanted to talk about, what do you, like, if you wanted to go on a rant about, I love this beer or I love this game. Which industry do you think is going to... Okay, okay. Here's All right. If you go that route for who would I rather talk to about what, and say me being a Twitter guy. Say I put a... I threw a post out there for an opinion on it. Who I would rather hear from? Or, no, who would I expect a better argument from in general? Probably beer. Just because with beer, you're going to be 10... You're going to tend to talk to an older crowd. Who is probably, for the most part, or well, they're be... at least twenty-one, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but well, yes, of course. I mean, but yeah, no, but in, yeah, but even at that point, like in general, it's going to be an older crowd. So you're going to have the typical spurgs that you're going to have with anything that are going to be like all hardcore about one thing, or this is better than that, or like basically the console wars of like fucking the beer industry and shit like that. Like there's those people out there. I just think beer tends to lend itself to a little more nuanced discussion just because the personalities around it are older like you can have a disagreement about it and like you know there's going to be the shitheads there but with beer people like they care about their craft so much and the ins and outs of the craft so much even on like a minor sense like you can't talk to like a casual fan about the you know the how they coded something for a game but even a guy at your level of beer, like, is you're way higher with the beer and the ins and outs of beer than I am. Like, you could talk to, like, someone, like, either a head brewer or just a hardcore fan. And, like, you have a basic enough knowledge of, like, the background of what you're expecting and tasting and, like, how to differentiate shit. Where even if you disagree on it, like, you can probably have a civil conversation unless someone's a complete social idiot. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, like, just because of the age, the the variation in age... For what you can get thrown at you, beer is probably a safer bet for a better conversation. No, that's a good point. And I also thought, like, t- kind of piggybacking what you're saying, I feel like when you talk to people who are into craft beer specifically, they are more, I don't want to use the term experts, but more knowledgeable than the casual gamer. Yeah, you, I mean, like, it'll be, like, I mean, like, both industries are really, really similar. With, yeah. like, the personalities behind them, with the people who get to the top, with the the ultimate enemy, like, big triple A ones, mm-hmm. or the big three in the beer world. Like, the, the two worlds are fucking similar as shit. And, like, the hardcore fandoms that you can get from it, so. But, again, I just think because of the age gap, I think beer is probably easier to talk with. 
No, that that makes a lot of sense. But let me ask you then. How do I put this? So I'm trying to think the right way to say this, but like, what do you think is easier in terms of subjective views? If a beer is good or if a game is good? Because we've talked before, I truly am my I, I truly believe the most subjective thing in the world is music. Right. It's only hearing and what you hear and what I hear and what we both like are completely different. You can generally both agree, like, unless you're a vegan, like, steak tastes like steak and it's better than chicken. Like, you, you know, there are some things that some people may or may not. But once you get games and beer, because you are like, you know, the beer, now you're getting taste. But visual is not as important. And with And with video games, there's an art aspect to it. With music, with game, like there's this whole other thing, yeah. And especially like you're actively participating versus beer, you're kind of passively. What do you think's more subjective? So if we were to say like undoubtedly the you, best, you know video- what? You know what? At this point, like I know for a long time with our reviews, we try to be like we try to be as objective as possible. And being objective in any kind of reviews, fucking, it's it's not a thing. No, of like course not. We, we we try to be as fair as we can, but I mean, we have our biases and our views and shit like that. So, but that's like, what I'm saying. Like, do you think universally, when someone says, "What's the best NES game?" Uh, Ninety out of a hundred are gonna say Super Mario Three. But if yeah. you say someone, if you put out, what, a poll, what's the best what, IPA? Yeah, I feel like you're never gonna get a same answer more than like ten times. Yeah, no, you're probably right about that. So, so it's like, is that? But is that also the local exclusivity of it all? That does that doesn't help. But I think there's definitely something to be said for like it's way easier to like make a top ten list of a game console than it would be for oh be any kind of beer for type. a beer. Yeah. yeah, it's part of the reason why we've never like I've I've considered it many times, and other than secluding it to like pa and even then we've saw backlash <laughs> you know oh yeah you know it's it's one of those where <clears throat> I, beer is it's interesting because it is so much more subjective but like you just said i feel like you could civilly have a conversation about why you like this over that and people could agree <laughs> whereas games i feel like it's all or nothing it's like, what? You don't like this? Fuck you. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get... Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think game the game the general gaming crowd's way easier to just get that. And, like, I don't... Even on, like, my Twitter circles, like, I'm not even in any of the hardcore, like, console war dipshit people. Like, holy crap, man. I can't believe how bad the console wars are in this day and age. It's still... Go- I, I mean, I know I've seen it with the Xbox and PlayStation dudes, but, like... No, I mean, that's what it is. Like It's, it's amazing it's, how... Like, what are you guys bitching about? Like, seriously. Teraflops? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this day and age, you guys all have the same fucking games, except for, like, four games, so... You know what it is, Jim? People just want to, like, have a side to say, I'm winning. That's all it, it is. It's, I'm winning, and a lot of people don't have a personality, so they put their personality into the thing they like too much. It, it, it's like a guy with a pickle rick cat tattoo. It's like, ah, oh, no, you didn't do that, did you? <laughs> Don't even be sorry with that. But all right, so then here's here's uh, a way to round this out. What would you rather do? Go to an arcade and play with a bunch of random people, or pull up what are what arcades? Or pull up to a legit, not just like a dive bar, but like a legit craft beer place, sit and drink with some people, chat beer. Or, or play games like who do you think you're gonna get along with a little better oh the the bar the brewery yeah i mean but that's uh, that, uh, that's also a thing too though because like anyone who's gonna all go to the same brewery is all going with like the same mindset where like anyone who's going to a brewery wants to go there wants to try all the beers and wants to enjoy what they're having where like if people go into an arcade like Arcade play, arcade games are all about quarter munching and fucking being better than the other person that's there. So it's a different mindset too. I mean, I guess then in that sense, you could almost argue with games. Even if you're with your best bud, and even if you're doing co-op, you're trying to beat them. You want to yeah. get a higher score. Like there's never a true communal set. Even like 
and COD, when we're all playing together to win the match, it's like, I got to get more kills than this person. You know, like, it's never... Oh, yeah, you still bust the, buddy, the balls of the buddy who's in last place of your team. Yeah, like... Whereas, you go, hey, pull your fucking weight, asshole. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you're just drinking craft beer, it is just a true communal, like, yo, what do you think of this? Like, oh, you should try sympathy. Like, I feel like the beer community is better in terms of, like, true, just talking with folks, socializing, this and that. Gaming... It's just it's just innately always going to be competitive. So it's tough. Yeah, now that's a good way to sum it up. Like the gaming, anything with games is too competitive to be like for just a overall experience of being in that realm. It's going it's not going to be as easy going as the beer one is going to be. Is there a game that you can think of that is truly selfless? Like you truly don't care about beating the co-op dude you're playing with? Like you just trying to win? <sighs> Animal Crossing? (laughs) (laughs) That's all I can think of. Even then, you probably want the most, what is it, flowers or bells? (laughs) Yeah, like, I mean, maybe, I mean, like, I mean, I hear the community's toxic. Maybe Overwatch, because you have your support players and your fucking offensive players. But, uh, but like, that's tough. You know what, Jim? I'm throwing it out there Friday the 13th, because you all just want to survive from Jason. Even that, though you do man. every so often get some dicks who get the car started and just drive off. For the most part, we're all like, yo, who's got this? Who's got that? Stop looking at Nats. Where are all these fucking bugs coming from? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> They're looking for your keystone, bud. I'm going to fucking kill this goddamn motherfucker <laughs> trying to get my keystone. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're listening to this and you're not beer, big into beer in the street, it'll be obvious that you're going to go gaming but, you know, it's one of those things, I've always noticed a parallel between the two. There's good and bad from both of them. Yeah. But either way, just uh, hopefully, whichever one you're into, don't give shit to people for having a different opinion. Hear them out, talk about them. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> I, it's fine by my face. I can't help you. You're fine. <laughs> He's not going to hurt you. It's going to eat my soul. So, with that... We want to say thank you, everyone, who has listened the entire episode. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube so you can stay um, in tune with us. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, please leave us a five-star rating. You can bash us in the comments and we'll reply. We really appreciate it. Check out our website for latest polls for our merchandise. And with that, we want to say have a good night and cheers. Cheers, guys.